Hey, how y'all doing out there? Hello. It's good to be back with you. How you doing today? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing all right. Amazing. We're uh, Pastors Kelly, Pastor Dolly here, uh, Liberty Christian Center, Trinity, Texas. Yes. It's good to be back with you. Uh, hope you're getting some information out of these. Give you something to think about. Mm -hmm. get, something to get you in the Bible. Start looking for looking for stuff yourself. Yes, you know, that's kind of one of our one of our goals with this is maybe raise questions in you where you go find out for yourself. Yeah, that's important. It is because it's kind of what I'm going to get about, kind of get into today. We talked the last time we were talking about, we brought up the church being essential, and it is the most essential thing in the, in the world right now. Yeah. But it all stems from the image of God we were talking about. And the church should represent the image of Christ because it is the body of Christ. Right. So I thought today, we'll just let's just go back and see where it all started. And what is the, what is the mandate on the church? What are we supposed to be doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different things, but let's just go back and look at the start. So book of Acts, Acts chapter 1. Jesus had told them, and I think it was uh, Luke, at the end of Luke, he said, Go and wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Yes. And so the church should be operating in power. Yes. He told them to wait. Don't don't make a move until you get that power. Yeah. So then over in the book of Acts, chapter 1, down around 6, they asked him, are you going to at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? In verse 7, he said, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You need the Holy Ghost operating in your life. You need him in your church. You need him in your own personal life. You need the power. So that's twice Jesus has said you need the power. Right. So, but after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. So basically, Jesus has called the church to be a witness. Right. We are to be witnesses of him, of Jesus Christ. And so, I, you know me, I looked it up. A witness... Somebody who gives evidence after seeing or hearing something. Right. Now you put a witness on the witness stand. Right. And, and, they and, tell what they know. What and that's experience. what I'm going to I'm going to use a lot of courtroom jargon. I've only been to court once in my life, and that was enough. So I tried to fly straight <laughs> after that. But uh, thank you, God. Yeah. <laughs> but witnesses, they call witnesses to tell what did you see and hear. Right. What did you see and hear? And you know, there's a term called hearsay. They don't want secondhand. Well. Johnny told me this is what happened. Right. Well, that don't work. It's the same with this. You don't have to listen to us. I'm just giving you, I'm witnessing to you what God, Jesus has done in my life. Yeah. The reason you would want to listen to us is because we've already made a whole lot of mistakes. <laughs> and so the point we're at right now, we have learned some things. And if you would take um, counsel from somebody that's already been through some things, you could save yourself a lot of heartache yeah. and a lot of trouble and a lot of problems that yeah. we went through. We're always trying to find people that we want to listen to that we think, okay, they're doing what we want to do. They're, they're successful. They're, they're moving forward and they are, they've been here before and they can help us navigate yeah. quickly and easily. That starts getting into the realm of, um, you know, just you, you just happen to be standing outside. You never been in a courtroom in your life, and you just saw and heard something go down, and so they call you in. Or you, 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 they got expert witnesses. You yes. know, so depending on your uh, place in the church, what part God's put you in, you can be an expert witness. You know, if you're called to be an apostle, you can be an expert witness as an apostle. Mm -hmm. You can teach apostleship, or you can right. teach evangelism. Right. There's different things like that. that, that, that different degrees of witness but we're all called to be witnesses of jesus christ yes and we see and hear something you know when i got into church I, before i got into church i had heard a lot of things about god right uh, people had witnessed usually me. not very i had favorable. heard about him right but i didn't know him you know i i need to know him myself and you can so that's the witness i'm giving you the testimony i'm giving you is straight one the first hand this is what I have seen and heard from God. That's right. So it says that somebody that gives evidence. Evidence basically means something that gives a sign or proof of the existence or truth of something. Or that helps somebody come to a particular conclusion. 
you know, the first time I got in church today, I went to church three times before I went up and got saved. And even years before that, I knew I had come to the conclusion in my mind that I was missing something. And I looked all over the world for it through drinking and drugs and this particular group and that particular group. Mm -hmm. And when I went to church that first time, I saw a guy get up on stage and, and witness right. to the things that God had done in his life. I said, hey, that sounds pretty good. I came back the second time, same thing. He, he, he witnessed. He wasn't beating anybody over the head, wasn't trying to scare me into hell. You know, oh, you're going to burn in hell. Mm -hmm. Wasn't none of that. He was just giving testimony of what God had done in his life. Right. And the third time, I was like, man, I think I want that. You know, that sounds like he helped me come to a conclusion that I knew I was missing something. He did it with, you know, signs, wonders, miracles, testimonies. A lot of ways God uses for us to do that. Right. But Jesus said, you're going to be witnesses unto me. And so you get over and let's see what the chapter two, Paul's first sermon, chapter two, the Holy Spirit fell. They got the power and the church began. And the first sermon that was ever preached in church was by Peter. And he lays it all out for him, Old Testament, New Testament. But the, right. the verse I want to look at, he says, down in uh, chapter two, verse 22, he says, you men of Israel, hear ye these words. He's just being a witness. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. There's evidence. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's firsthand. He, he walked with Jesus and saw this himself. Right. He said, the miracle, the wonders and signs which God did. God did them. That's right. By him. In the midst of you, as you yourselves know. All these people had seen what Jesus had done. Mm -hmm. And he's laying it out. He's witnessing to them again that Jesus was a man approved by God for God to do works through and witness through. Jesus was kind of showing them to the Lord, to, to God. Mm -hmm. And then now we're showing people to Jesus because you can't get to God except through him. Unless you're a Jew. What? I mean, if you're a Jew, oh yeah, you, can, you know, you, you you're can trying to do the law on. right now, but there's going to be an unveiling. Your eyes are right. going to be open and hopefully you'll, you'll make the right choice at that point. Yeah. So, right now, you must be born again. You Jesus to told the church Jesus. to be a witness of him. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Well, then he keeps going. He gets over into chapter 4. He's, he's still witnessing. He's going all over Jerusalem witnessing like he was told. Yeah. And, and chapter 4, they had, or chapter 3, they had healed the guy. And God had healed the guy through them mm -hmm. that had never, hadn't walked. And so the, the religious leaders at the time, they got, we got to stop this, man. They're, right. they're stirring up the people and coming, you know, they're taking our glory. <laughs> Basically, I, I, I want to just point out Jesus and the apostles, their biggest hindrance was the religious leaders. And so don't think it's strange or unheard of yeah. if that tends to be who your biggest problems yeah. are too. The birth of the church in the world, the unbelievers and the religious leaders coming against the church and it's, nothing's changed today. Yeah, that's still exactly the, probably the most yeah. of the big problems will be. So anyway, these, these religious leaders rounded up the preachers, Paul and uh, Peter and John, and called them before and said, look, y'all got to pre quit preaching in this guy's name. Right. And so over in verse 19, that don't speak this name nor teach in his name at all. In verse 19, Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge that. He says, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Amen. They're going out and being witnesses. That's right. That's all, you know, that's a testimony. You know, I can sit back and tell somebody, hey, you know, I, I can, I was there. I was, I witnessed it. It happened to me. Jesus delivered me from the, from the addiction of smoking pot. Right. Jesus has delivered me from, from drinking. Alcohol. And I'm not saying those are good or bad. I'm just telling you, I'm witnessing to you what happened to me. Exactly. The things I've seen and heard. And if, you, if you're at a point in your life where, you know, those things are hindering you, well, you God, know. God can help you with that. There's witness and testimony out there. Right. And, you know, it says Peter and John. You go all the way through. You get all the way over to the book of John through his whole ministry. The first, the first, uh, the uh, first John, the book of First John, okay. chapter one. He starts out that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, and which we have seen with our eyes, 
which we have looked upon and our hands have handled the word of life. He's still preaching that same message. Yeah. He's still just telling you the things that he saw and heard in his own first person account with Jesus Christ. That's all we can do. That, that's, that's, well, that's all, all you need. should do. Yeah, now, there are people out there, they take some scripture out of the Bible and they preach it, but they preach it to condemnation and shame because um, they think that's what you need to hear. Right. And that's not really a good way to do it. You should first, the Bible says, how are you oh, going to pull yeah. out a splinter in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own eye? He said, first, if you want to be effective, pull out the log that's in your eye. And then you will see how to effectively help your brother get the splinter out of his eye. Right. But it actually says there, if you see a splinter in your brother's eye, you have yeah. a log in your and, own yeah. eye. We'll figure so you, you, out first. you have bigger problems than they do if you're if you're seeing all their problems. Yeah. So what Jesus is suggesting that you do is just get yourself straight and then share what God has done for you. That yeah. is the best way to witness and to testify. Yeah. And it, the, that that calling never stops because Paul, you know, John yeah. was an apostle, right? But and it's his, the underlying the underlying purpose of the church is to witness the things that we have seen and heard by Jesus Christ. Yes. Then once we come into the family, Jesus has taken our sin. We're reestablished with the Father. He puts us in a particular place in the body. Mm -hmm. We have a purpose, a calling. Mm -hmm. If you're an apostle, you should still be witnessing. If you're an evangelist, you should be witnessing. If you're just in the lay ministry, if you're a business owner, you should be if witnessing. If you're a housewife and it you go to no the grocery difference. store, yeah. you should be witnessing. As the body of Christ, yeah. you should be telling, pe telling people the things that you have seen and heard about Jesus Christ. Now, you know, and it's real easy to do if you are in a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. If you are actively on a daily basis in a relationship with Jesus, what we're saying right here is going to be the easiest thing in the world to yeah. do because he is constantly blessing you and increasing you and raising you up and encouraging you, and you'll have lots to share. Um, it's going to be a struggle, though, if you are not in a relationship with the Lord yourself and you're trying to tell people what to do. And there well, we go back to... Well, information. Yeah, that we go back to Here's people saying. that just take the Bible and preach it at somebody, which only produces condemnation and shame. Yeah. It's, it, you need to know him. You need to know about him, but more important than that, you need to know him. Yeah. Because the reason I was, you know, I was thinking, looking at all these uh, courtroom terms, mm -hmm. cross-examination. You, you give your testimony sitting on the trial, you sitting on the stand, you tell the, the jury and everybody what you saw and heard. Well, here comes an, here comes somebody to try to pick holes in your story. Right. And they cross-examine, you know, I like to cross-examine. Let's oh, that's good. You know, let's examine, let's examine, let's oh, examine this, <laughs> <laughs> let's examine this cross <laughs> that you're, you're witnessing to, you right. know? And so the first time that ever happened was in, Gen in Genesis 3. Right? Yeah. The devil came in there. Uh, Eve said, here's what God said. God told us firsthand. What, here, here's what God said. And the devil said, did he really say that? Yeah. He came in and cross-examined her witness testimony, and she faltered. Yeah. You know? she she. That's why you need to know him. Which, you know, I don't blame her because he's such a deceiver. He, he was, you know, and if it, you spend time happened. listening to him and talking to him, he's going to deceive you too. I believe it happened exactly like it was supposed to. I don't know. I'm not going to try to figure out the God's right. mind, but he's deceived he had a me place. before. He had a place, mm -hmm. and the testimony we give—that's all we can do. You know, that's what they said. I'm going to testify what I've seen and heard. Believe it or not, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Now you need you need to hear true testimony so that you can make a decision. You can't make a good decision based on bad information. That's right. You can't make a good, the jury can't make a good decision if they got witnesses that one says it was a blue card, one says red, one says this one. When you got all these competing testimonies coming together, it's hard to make a, a decision based on truth. Mm -hmm. So you need to Find a church. Let God lead you to a church. Let God give you the testimony through the through through people and through His Word and through your own talking to Him. God will hear a sinner. Everybody acts like God don't want nothing to do with sinners. God will hear a sinner's right. cry. That's right. And He can get information to you so that you can make a true and informed decision on 
the particular conclusion is you need Jesus Christ. Yeah. 